Hello everyone, in today's demonstration I'm going to talk you through the basics on how to create and construct this amazing Grecian style chip and nugget necklace. Isn't it lovely to, to go back to my roots to have some really good chunky nuggets? Now th this particular necklace is using the most amazing strand of Amazonite and some blue banded agate. So the other materials you're going to need, are, as I've just stated, we need some chips. Now, as I said, I'm using Amazonite. We're going to be using two mediums in this particular piece of jewellery. We're going to be using wire. Now, this is a 0.8 millimetre gauge, and we're going to be making these little WAGS Y cones, which I'm going to show you. Then we're using some gold beading thread, which is part of our basics threading pack. So we're going to be using two materials. Then we're also going to be using the banded agate. Now on the strand that you actually get with the kit, you get these little spacer beads, and we're going to be using those as well as stoppers to the ends of our WAGS Y cones here. So don't throw those away, we're going to be using those. Then you're going to need a toggle clasp from your findings pack, and then you're also going to need some crimp beads. Okay, so that's all your basic equipment. So let's get started. I'll just move this to one side. And the first thing we need to do is we need to take three pieces of our beading thread. So three separate pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach the clasp to the three ends. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to take one of our little crimp beads from our findings pack and then one half of our clasp. So I'm going to go for the ogle. This is known as the ogle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the three pieces and this is probably about two foot long. Obviously depending on the size and the length of the necklace will determine the, the, the actual length you need but two, two feet is a good, good actual length. I'm going to take the three pieces of the beading thread and I'm going to feed them all through the crimp bead at the end. And then on top of those three pieces of thread, I'm going to attach my toggle clasp. And then I'm, with the three ends, I'm going to reverse them back down through the same crimp bead. Now you have space for probably nine or ten threads in that crimp bead, so there's plenty of space. I'm going to slide it up, and I don't want it too constricted, so I'm just leaving a little loop at the top and then using my flat nose pliers I'm going to give a little squidge okay and then what I'm going to do these three little tails here I'm going to cut those off using my flush cutter pliers so I'm just going to go in and cut those off so you get a nice neat finish your clasp is attached and you have your three threads ready to go so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to separate our threads and what we need to do, we need to pop a little Y cone on the end here to start. So the first thing we're going to do, do you remember I mentioned those little spacer bees that you get in your kit, in your strand? We're going to take all three ends of our thread again, and we're going to place one of the beads on all three threads. We're going to slide that down, and that ends acts as a nice stopper. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add one of our cones. So I'm quickly going to show you how we make a cone. So this is the tool, this is the WAGS Y cone tool, and this is perfect for making, funnily enough, cone endings. And if you're doing things like Kumahimo or multi strand necklaces like the one we're making today, this is one of the top, it's probably in my top three, this amazing tool. Now, to make a cone like this, you'll probably need a good I don't know, 30 centimetres of wire. Now, 0.8 is fine. One millimetre is better. I wouldn't go any less than a 0.8 millimetre because you want some strength and rigidity. So as you can see with the tool here, we've got the wooden handle and then we've got the actual cone. And can you see right at the very end, we've got a tiny little hole. Now that's really important because that's going to attach our wire to make our cone. So the first thing we need to do, we need to prepare our wire. So using my round nose pliers, about an inch from the end, I'm just going to make an overhand loop, okay? So when I take it off, you can see we've got a right angle with a little loop. I'm going to take that short piece of wire and feed it through the end, through the hole. I'm going to push the tail up out of the way and then holding the tool in my right hand 
and the wire in my left, I'm simply going to start wrapping nice and tight all the way down. Now, depending on the size of cone you want, I wanted a cone just under an inch long, but if obviously if you wanted a longer cone, you, too, you, you cut off a piece of wire a bit longer than they actually need. I'm just going to continue that down. And as you can see, this, this tool is absolutely ingenious. So I'm just going to feed that down. Okay. And then what I'm going to do to, to take it off of the cone, can you see where the wire, we've got the loop, and it goes through the hole and comes out to the other side. So I'm going to cut the wire to the left, just where the loop is. That little tail drops off, and then the cone slides off. So I'll put that to one side. So to finish off our cone, all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the last little section and then I'm going to cut off the loop. And you want to cut as near to the loop as you possibly can, like so. So there we have our perfectly made cone. There might be an idea for this necklace, I need M246810 altogether. So it might be better before you start your piece making those 10 cones so you're ready to rock and roll. So then what we've got to do, we're going to go back to our threaded piece of work. So do you remember we've put all three pieces of thread through that little seed bead? Then I'm going to take the three ends of my thread and I'm going to take down through the cone, pull the cone down to the bottom there and you'll see that the cone sits nicely around that space of bead at the bottom. What you don't want is you don't want your cone going off the end and getting attached to your clasp. So any type of bead or gemstone just to pop on the end of the of the cone there just to finish it off. Right, so next we're going to separate our three threads and on each of our thread we're going to put, now I've, on my necklace I had four centimeter lengths. So before you, you um, take them off your strain just measure them up against a tape measure or your macrame board which is a really nice little tool to use. And we're going to pop on, as I said, between four and five centimetres. So the first thing you do when, you, when you've got your little four centimetre pile is you want to take four of the smallest chips that you can find. Now these are going to be at the one end of the thread and at the other end of the thread. You want to go for the small. So I'm just simply going to thread on my two small chips first of all. And then we're just going to pop our rest of our chips on. Now it doesn't matter any particular order, it doesn't really doesn't matter. If you can, try to be quite random. Um, the brain plays funny tricks on you when you're using gemstone chips like this because you tend to pick up all the larger ones first and then you're left with a small and you get sort of a graduated effect, um, which in some cases is, is nice, but we don't want that on this particular piece of work. So I'm just going to continue threading. And uh, this Amazonite has got really nice good size drill holes in so it's absolutely simple for threading. So let's put a couple more on. As I said you would have measured this out off the strand first of all before you started and then we're going to put our little ones on to finish the end. Okay so once you've done one thread so you can see we've threaded our little chip section you're going to repeat the same with the other two sections. So if I just pop that to one side and bring over one that I've prepared. So as you can see this is what it looks like. You have your cone at the end which we've got our clasp attached and then I've got my three threads with my four centimeters of Amazonite chips on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do what's called the chip squidge. Now as you can see these um, chips are all different sizes, they're completely organic, completely completely different and there are spaces in between. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that those chips tessellate nice and neatly together. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold them nice and tight and we're just going to squidge. We're going to push down on our thread and we're just going to manipulate them so they all sit and slot in together. As you can see, we've got three nice little sections there. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our three ends of our thread. We're going to pop on our bead stopper. No, we're not. We're going to pop on our cone first of all. So we're going to pop on our cone. We're going to slide that down. And you can see then that our cone hides the ends. Then we're going to pop on our stopper bead. Like so. And then we're going to put a bit of a decoration 
in between. So we're going to choose a couple of our amazing banded blue agate. So I think I'm going to go for this one with all the stripes. It's beautiful. Okay, and I'm going to slide the agate on. So as you can see, all of the strands in the kits fit beautifully. They've got really good substantial drill holes. So that is our decorative stone. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to pick up another of our little spacer beads. So one, two, three, slide that down. Then we're going to take our next comb, which we've prepared earlier. We're going to slide that down. And then we're going to repeat this section here. So we've got our three threads, which we're then going to attach our chips to. So if we're just going to continue that now, now on my necklace I had five of these beaded sections with four of the agates in between. So ten of the cones, then obviously you have the same number of the little space beads in between, and then your chips. And I had plenty to make this whole necklace, if I just bring it back across to show you. I had enough to do the whole necklace and I had spares. Okay, so you can see here. We've got uh, our toggle, which I've attached the second side to exactly the same way as we did the first. So you finish off your necklace, you take all three threads up through a crimp bead, up through the second part of the clasp, down through crimp, and then cut off your, your rough edges. And, um, and as you can see, it makes the most beautiful Grecian style necklace, especially using the gold against the blue and the amazing Amazonite. So this is your Let's call, it, let's call it the chip squidge necklace, shall we? And as I said, it's very, very simple. But what I definitely recommend doing is just make a little group of your wire um, cones just to start, and then you can just make your necklace and you can you can continue. So obviously, I've done four centimeter sections on my on my chips here. But there's nothing stopping you doing five or six. You could have maybe a ten centimeter section at the bottom and then five, and then three at the top. You can you can really experiment with it. And as I said, I've, I've done groups of three. If you wanted something slightly larger, you could do groups of five, but then you'd have to make sure you had larger, longer cones. So it's all about experimentation, but um, I love this kit so much. And because we've got amazing Amazonite chips, we've got these huge agate boulders, we've got thread, we've got wire. It's a real old school kit. And I'm absolutely overjoyed with the uh, with the outcome. So I hope you enjoy it too. And I look forward to seeing your makes.